happiness through curiosity on TRS Clips. I've actually not had too many people on the show who know much about North American culture, especially. Uh, I'd like for you to start this conversation wherever you wish. Uh, possibly, I think it would be helpful if you give some context on Native American culture because even words like Cherokee or places like Oklahoma, I don't think Indian audiences have much context. So you can start off with the 101, sir. Okay. Until... Uh, well, aside from the Vikings who came very briefly to Newfoundland, which is the more nor most northeastern part of North America about a thousand years ago, um, the people started transiting from Asia into the Americas maybe 20,000 years ago. So they had plenty of time where they were not being influenced by other people. And they went from all that, that northern area all the way down to the southern part of South America. Columbus shows up 1492. And after that, the, the Europeans start to interfere with things. And so there, as in Africa, as in Australia, various cultures had developed some of them had had created cities like the Incas in Peru, uh, like there there is a, a culture in um, New Mexico, which is a state in the United States that had its own kind of uh, uh, urban sort of situation that nobody knew about that was outside of that area. Even people and even natives in other parts of North America might not have known about it because people didn't move around that much. And then the Europeans came in and then things started to change. The number one reason things started to change is the Europeans brought diseases with them, diseases that no one in North or South America had been exposed to. So within the first 20 years or 30 years of any culture coming in contact with Europeans, approximately 90% of the people died from smallpox, from measles, from things that might not have killed people in Europe and Asia, but the, nobody was, had been exposed to them in the Americas. So right there, a big part of the culture gets totally, just imagine if, you know, tomorrow 90% of the people in, in your location suddenly weren't there. How would you keep society together? It'd be almost impossible. So it was very difficult. It's been difficult for the past 500 years, unless you've been totally separated from the rest of the world to keep you, what was going on back then intact. Some people have been able to do it to some degree. Um, so let's take, let's start with North America, uh, where, which is where I come from. There are 50 states in the U.S., um, uh, one of which is Hawaii, which has its own Polynesian culture, and one of which is Alaska, which still has a lot of Native Americans. But the Native Americans in Alaska are very different from the Native Americans in Florida or the Native because they were they they developed their culture in the context of the land they were on. They were they had a a, a living relationship with the land. So they were everybody developed their own different culture. Of course, the Europeans didn't care about that. They just wanted to extract things from the land. So they came in and disturbed all these cultures. Um, and one of the ways they disturbed them is they found out that there were a bunch of people who happened to be on some land that they wanted, and then they either killed them or they drove them away. So, for example, one of the tribes of North American natives that was very prominent in the east part of the country were called the Cherokee. And um, the Cherokee were doing very well where they were. Uh, until the government under Andrew Jackson decided that it wanted their land. And so it forced them to walk several hundred miles to what is now called Oklahoma, which is a state that's north of Texas. And so I went to high school and college in Oklahoma. And that was at that time called the Indian Territory. So all the natives that they didn't want somewhere else because they wanted to have farmland or they wanted to prospect for minerals or whatever, they would send them to Oklahoma. And so you, you ended up with people, uh, another, you know, another large percentage of them died because you're walking in the, in the fall and the winter and it's cold and you don't have enough food and there's disease and so on. Lots of people are dying. 
So this disturbs your culture also. So they get to Oklahoma, they try to keep their culture intact. It's very difficult because they have all and and the and the and the 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 Europe the Europeans who have now turned into Americans, they are not that they, they don't think that the the natives have any value. They think that the natives should all become nice brown skinned Americans and then everything will be great. But the natives still feel a relationship to the land. They still feel a relationship to the animals and the plants. They still feel that there is something that the Europeans have forgotten. I've heard, I, I don't know this is true, but th that when the aboriginals in Australia saw white people arriving, they thought they were ghosts. And not just because they had white skin, because they looked inside them and they didn't see anything. They saw that there was, there was no in India, we'd call it dharma. There was no, there was no connection to anything real. There was only hunger. The and and the natives, some of the natives in, um, in 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 North America, uh, there there's a, uh, I forget which tribe, but there's a concept of of what's called a wendigo, and the wendigo is something that just has an appetite. It just continues to eat. Some of the South Americans call the European settlers and their descendants termite people because they don't produce anything. They just eat. So, so there's, there's been, you know, the, the natives could understand, okay, our, maybe this tribe over here, they're our neighbors. We're enemies with them. But we're not going to kill them all off. We're not going to destroy them. We're just going to, we're going to create a boundary and they will have their reality and we'll have their real, uh, our reality. And this is how we're going to live. It was a totally new and different thing for them to have a, a, a group of people who kept coming in, destroying everything, chopping down forests, killing all the animals, and killing everybody who was living or driving away everybody who was in there. So somehow, some of the natives in North America have been able to preserve some of their traditions. And I've been very fortunate to have been become associated with a group of people who is maintaining uh, what what is um, what is called a, a, a sun dance. And this sun dance is where uh, a number of people who uh, who who follow this. It's it's um, this particular group is um, associated with the Lakota, uh, which used to be called the Sioux. Um, and uh, but but uh, that was a French name that was imposed on them. So the Lakota have um, they appreciate the sun. They've lived in a far northern area, and uh, that's an area was very dark in the winter. And so you you are really looking for the sun to come back. Here in India, we don't worry about that. You're, there's always the sun. Sweeter to we're not worried about the sun disappearing. But there. You're always the in the winter. Maybe you've only got five or six hours of sun. If you're in Alaska, four hours of sun, and then it's dark. And darkness is hard for human beings to deal with. So there, there has always been an appreciation that that there had to be an alignment with the sun, so that even when it was dark, there could be some of that solar energy coming in and maintaining that light on the inside so people would not get dark and constricted and start to start to become corrupted in some way by that darkness. And so the Sundance is a very, it's, it's a very serious, very serious penance. I mean, if you want to, first you want to really evaluate that you, that you want to do the Sundance and then you, then you, then you have to, you have to pray about it and you might go on a, a vision quest, and that would require you to go sit on a in one place away from everything for four days with no food and no water, waiting for a vision to be delivered to you. And once you get the vision, if if in, everything is in alignment, then you can consider actually doing the dance. And the dance also involves for four days you eating nothing and drinking nothing and being out there and aligning yourself with the sun. So this is very serious penance. And I think what's important to, uh, to emphasize here is that people, the people who do this, they're not doing it for themselves. I mean, we think nowadays, you know, I'm going to do some penance, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to get some benefit. 
they're not doing it for themselves. They're doing it for their people. And that's what the songs say, that I am... Uh, I uh, have been per, uh, fortunate to be able to participate um, in this particular Sundance for th on three occasions. And I uh, work with the, the fire because of the, the sweat lodges and various other things. You, a fire has to be burning all the time. So I like to work with the fire at night because that's, um, the fire has to be kept alive. Who taught you all this? Like who introduced you to Native American culture in this way? Um, it started off by I was introduced to sweat lodges, and that was when I probably I did the first sweat lodge uh, 30 years ago, maybe longer in New Mexico. And New Mexico is a place um, there are a lot of, as its name suggests, a lot of um, uh, Mexican influence and Spanish influence. But there are a number of native uh, tribes there also and have been there for uh, thousands of years. I have to talk a little bit about sweat lodges because I don't think too many people who watch the show know about it. I got introduced to it through a gentleman who owns a resort, like an eco resort in a place called Jibbi in Himachal Pradesh. He made myself and six of my team members do it with him. It's basically a tiny tent that they build. You, you keep like really heated rocks right in the center of the tent. You chant mantras. Uh, you conduct pranayam inside the tent and then you throw water, cold water onto those hot rocks. So it becomes kind of like a micro steam room. Now it sounds simple, but there's some kind of trance that you go into and something extremely primal comes out of you. I remember being through a really low phase of my life when I went through that sweat lodge experience. Uh, right after you get out of the tent, they pour really cold water on you. And this is done in very cold weather. This was done in January in the Himalayas. So I'm assuming it's similar weather uh, in North America as well. Like it's cold outside. You go into like a really hot sweat lodge. You get lots of thoughts. You get to confront your own thoughts. And when you go out, they pour cold, cold water on you. You feel really hungry. And then you eat to end the ritual. At least that's what we did in Himachal Pradesh. But you feel extremely strong after doing that sweat lodge experience. Am I saying anything wrong? Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, except that they're different, different, they're, uh, as with many practices, there are different ways of doing sweat lodges in different places. And in Mexico, they do it slightly different. They call it a temescal down there. So, uh, but, but it's basically the same thing. You're requesting, it's, 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 everyone is together. It should be totally dark. You bring in the rocks, you add the water and you are, you, it's as if you're at the center of the universe mm. and the rocks represent the, the ancestors and you've the grandfathers and the grandmothers and you've requested them to be present and you're asking them for guidance and you're asking them to 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 uh, you're asking that they assist you to live in the right way. So this is all about this. This is all very much about aligning yourself with reality and you know this there are different ways to do this it's it's like the the thing that is probably the most important thing for anyone in the world is to be aware of what you're thinking thinking is a bad habit it's important to think but thinking itself as a habit is a really bad habit so this is one way to address those think uh, that that thought another way is um doing a vipassana retreat uh, which I've been fortunate to do at, at Igatpuri, which is very near here. Th uh, and you just have to sit and be with your mind and allow your thoughts to come out. And, 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 and so you become aware of something that is not limited by all these thoughts that are going on in your head all, uh, <clears throat> all the time. And the, as, t as, as we go further and further into the modern world and we are, being manipulated more and more by the various things that want to manipulate us, they will keep trying to make us think in a particular way. Mm -hmm. And we have to be, as far as possible, each one of us, able to think independently. So you can't run away from the world. Maybe you could at one point. You can't do that anymore. There's nowhere to run. So you have to make sure that you are keeping your own awareness Focused, and that in the sun dance is one way to do that. So I don't go and try to dance, but I, I, and I work with the fire anyway. I, I, I worship the fire myself, so I have an opportunity 
to relate to the fire. And if if you're going to have a sweat lodge, somebody has to be tending the fire and they are they are encouraging those rocks to assist everybody in the sweat lodge to to purify themselves. And physical purification is one thing, but it's mental and emotional purification. Mm. Let it all be sweated out. Let everything come out. And then you are more open and you're more aware and you're there's the potential then for something good to be to to come down and be present inside you. Yep. You're making room for prana or life force to enter your body. Absolutely. And you have prana inside you, but but what happened is you're corrupting the prana. You're 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 holding yourself in particular ways that cause according to the way you're thinking. So you're 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 freeing yourself temporarily of a, a large number of those thoughts and that allows the prana to move into all parts of you open up dark areas that you may not have looked at before and bring light into places where light needs to go and then you can see things differently about yourself and therefore about the rest of the world and that's a benefit fair to say that every experience that we've spoken about on this episode and the last two episodes are somewhat related to opening up the channels of your own body mind and soul to allow more prana to flow into them absolutely that's what spiritual growth is i mean ultimately prana we're alive because of prana life is all because of prana so ultimately really speaking prana is for living beings like you and me prana is god coming back to the sun dance now sir i'll let you continue with that story because the sun seems to be an extremely important spiritual aspect of a lot of cultures all over the world so let's talk about this one and then we'll break away talk a little bit more about the sun well and and you know the 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 reason for the sun dance part of it is to be able to experience your own limitations and to be able to go through those limitations even if you're not actually out there dancing if you're there you're assisting the dancers you're doing things you're you're there with them and you're maybe you're chanting or maybe you're just maybe you're just there sitting with them and projecting um calm and projecting prawn in their direction and if you're working with the fire then you're you're uh, making sure there are plenty of hot coals onto which you put cedar so there will be purifying smoke they use at least this particular uh uh dance uses cedar put on hot coals i mean it's like agarbatti it's like you know any any other kind of fragrance that has number one a fragrance uh, the the fragrance is related directly to the earth element so a good fragrance will make you feel more stable hence the utility of of using agarbatti or whatever but it should be good quality agarbatti and not something made out of petrochemicals because that is going to have a not as stabilizing effect okay so this is basically a ritual where you fast you keep your stomach empty you allow the prana to go inwards and upwards towards your mind and you enter a state of meditation while you stare at the sun not staring at the sun but being out in the sun okay so and and uh, and and the thing is that of course you it's you want your mind and after uh, you know the, the not eating and 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 dancing and chanting you're it's going to be much more difficult for you to think so the idea is yes the prana should be you should be purifying on the inside and opening yourself to the reality of the sun and the sun you know you know here in let's talk about here in india for example the sun represents the soul the atma and so th- i i don't i don't know that they would describe it in the same way but it's basically the same thing it's the sun it gives life the sun uh provides heat which and the sun provides um uh it, it encourages the production of plants and animals which we use as food so without the sun that would be the end of the whole experience there would be no life without the sun so we're appreciating the sun we're aligning ourselves with the sun and this is people are sacrificing their food they're sacrificing their water they're sacrificing their rest so they're out there dancing and focusing to 
to to send their prayer to the sun again, not for themselves, but for their entire community. People, people, you know, and this is true of other other traditional groups that I've found. They're, I mean, to some degree, you're doing it for yourself. But the main reason is you want your because you are a limited person. You're going to be here for up to 70 years, 80 years, 90 years, maybe. Then you'll be dead. But where did you come from and who's going to come after you? So what's important is not you so much. I mean, you need to be you need to take care of yourself, but you're taking care of yourself to provide that continuity from your ancestors into your descendants. So that's what people, they're, they're aligning themselves with the sun, partly for their own spiritual development and partly to, to know that they can, to do something difficult and they're doing it, but they're not focusing on that. They're focusing on having this benefit the entire community that is supporting this, this ritual. I think we were talking about this outside when you said that sometimes during this ritual, you'll have a vision or the ritual will allow you to have a vision. What does that mean? Do you actually see something happening? Well, I, I, you know, I have a very limited uh, connection to this, so I can't, exp I can't, uh, I can't uh, speak authoritatively on what kind of visions people have. I've heard about things like that. But the idea is, for, I mean, if you do not eat, do not drink water, and you send, and I have never done that for four days. I've done that twice for three days. And you become very much clarified because you're, you're, you, now you're not taking things in that, of course, are being influenced by whatever people have, you know, added to it. And you're sitting and you're meditating and you're proceeding, you're reciting your mantras or whatever it is you're doing. And you can definitely start to feel that you are becoming more subtle, if that's what you're doing. I mean, if you are focused instead on, I'm going to do this to be a big, you know, a, a tough guy, that's what you're going to end up with. But if you're doing it seriously, you're going to find your awareness becoming more subtle. And, you know, the devatas, the gods and the goddesses, they may be able to manifest themselves down here occasionally, but they don't live on this plane. They live on a much more refined and subtle plane. So if we really want to connect with those gods and goddesses, we have to be a lot more, our awareness has to be a lot more refined and subtle. So this is, all of this process is for the purpose of making your normal you know, what is normal awareness for the normal human being? We're, our sense organs are connecting us to the world all the time. We're creating desire. The entire world exists because of desire. So this is what you're saying is for this period of however long it's going to be, I'm going to minimize my desires and I'm going to, I'm going to sacrifice. I could be eating. I could be drinking. I could be sleep, uh, you know, comfortable somewhere. I'm going to minimize those things so that I can align myself better temporarily with the subtle realities that are, that we have, that we, meaning our community, whatever that community is, uh, that have a relationship with. So I want to act as a, you know, some people have said that a human being, the job of a human being is to create a connection between the earth and the sky, all, and the sky means maybe you know not just the sky here, but the entire universe. You know the 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 for the Taoists, it's the set, the Milky Way. I mean the uh, uh, the Big Dipper, the Great Bear. Uh, other people may have some, but it's out there that is not limited by the Earth. So the human being has the ability to 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 position awareness in all kinds of different levels of subtlety. Let me have a shot at this. We spoke about how every single spiritual process from any every single culture allows you to increase the amount of pran shakti or life force that flows through your body. Every time you level up in that life force game, it's like as if one of the filters that was originally put on your body and your mind gets removed and you get connected to a higher reality. 
so the more you meditate the more you take part in these rituals the more you fast the more you clean up your body mind and soul the more you purify yourself the closer you are to a higher reality where you don't only have access to the physical reality around you the mental reality in your mind but also a spiritual reality that has always been around you but you've been blocked out from yes okay. yes definitely now the thing is of course that as you move in this direction so you're becoming more subtle but you've not become totally subtle which means your ego is still mm. present and there's always that question of the degree to which you are going to identify yourself with that shakti and you're going to start thinking that you're something big you and so this this and vimalananda used to say you know you make some progress spiritually and you will think oh that's great now everything is going to be easy for me no that's exactly the wrong thing he would say the more progress you make the harder it becomes the more progress you make the greater the potential if you start to identify with something and you start to think things should be a, a certain way the greater the potential that you're going to take that shakti and corrupt it yourself in some way so the as <clears throat> as you do more sadhana yes you will be your awareness will become more and more uh subtle and it will become more and more connected to the subtler realms of reality but you have to make sure that you that you continue to to your your ultimate focus continues to be on whatever it is you're focusing on maybe on your guru maybe on your ishta devata maybe on the supreme reality whatever it is but as soon as you as as soon as you forget that and you start to think that you are doing it instead of it's it's this process that involves you but is is much bigger than you are then you start to he would say dive bomb you start to move in the direction where now instead of you being moving in the direction of rama you're moving you're moving in the direction of ravana who has 10 heads the 10 sense organs and who thinks he's the king of lanka you're the king of your own re reality and you're taking sita which is your kundalini shakti and you're using her as your ego instead of what she really needs to do which is connect to rama which means the atma and 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 you've stolen her and at some point rama is going to come and kill you but and and naturally it will be good if ram does kill you but why instead just don't do that and remain as a devotee of rama or jesus or krishna or whoever it is you you want to bow down to what's the hanuman ji in this anecdote the pran the prana the pran and that's why um, <laughs> i don't know who we have to thank but that's why i suppose hanuman ji himself who is a chiranjeev who is still alive hanuman is the son of the god of wind hanuman is the 11th rudra he is the incarnation of the god of death he's the god of death because when prana goes out of your body you're dead so he's the god of death but he is he is the embodiment of that energy that brings life to everybody the embodiment of prana the advantage of hanuman is he is always focused on rama he doesn't care you know uh, it, it, it's he never gets angry he may be out there killing things but he's not angry with them he's doing it just because he knows that rama wants him so you know nowadays i see images of hanuman looking angry he's not looking he doesn't bother looking angry he is not the the th you know things like he doesn't care about that he cares only about rama rama says go kill that per that individual he goes and kills that individual rama says save that person he saves that person so how fortunate are we that we have access to hanuman and by accessing hanuman we can automatically connect to rama but we're accessing someone who is much more accessible than rama is because rama lived a long time ago don't know how long but a long time ago <sighs> so if you enjoyed this video subscribe to trs clips for more